Dylan Thompson, Chase Motorsports, Paducah, Kentucky. Going to take you around this 2018 Hallmark 45BH. So this is a triple slide motorhome on the 600 horsepower Volvo chassis with the iShift transmission. Uh, again, as I said, triple slide. One of the slides features the bunks. So uh, super nice um, deal if you're wanting to take some people with you and all sleep comfortable. So I got Jim on the camera. I'm going to just kind of take you around it. We'll start out going through each compartment and then we'll go inside. So uh, this guy here has storage and your Magnum inverter. So again, what an inverter does is it takes 12 volt DC power and uh, turns it into 120 volts. So essentially you can run like um, the refrigerator, your TVs, um, some outlets in the coach without having the generator on if you were in an area that you weren't plugged into shore power. So you're taking 12 volt and uh, turning it into 120 volt. Uh, next compartment over, I believe this guy is storage. Yep, just storage. We did put uh, rubber coin down, so underneath the rubber coin, uh, it is carpet. Uh, but this is something you can take out clean, and uh, sometimes over time, the carpet kind of gets worn looking. So with that rubber coin protector in there, that'll help preserve the carpet. Uh, we'll stop right here at this guy. This is your outdoor entertainment center. Uh, it is a Samsung TV with a Sonos soundbar, and then the two Kenwoods run from the doubled-in head unit. So when you're playing the TV, originally the way it was wired is these speakers done your TV, but previous owner likes his audio, as you'll see on the inside, and so he went with a Sonos outdoor soundbar. So turn the TV on and then power up this guy. This typically, the way they wire these coaches, this screen will play whatever's playing on the TV in the living room. It feeds off the same channel, same direct TV box, etc. Uh, the remote is also up in there for it. Uh, moving on down, next one is, uh, this is storage. So just more storage in there. And next bin is more storage, lots of storage. In fact, you could almost uh, take one of these and put like an outdoor grill in it if you want, because you do have an outdoor uh, cooler down here on the end that we'll show you, but that would be perfect for an outdoor grill. Uh, this one here is storage, and the box that is up in there is actually the uh, two inch receiver hitch that you can slide in the back of the coach and put your own receiver into it. So. Um, also right here is the propane filling station with a emergency, emergency shutoff switch. So uh, when you go to fill it with propane, that's where you'll do it at. Uh, this guy right here is your Dometic outdoor cooler. So these outdoor coolers, um, basically they're electric and there's no ice required. So you just turn them on and they get super cold. Uh, you can set the temp, you can make it more of a refrigerator temp or you can freeze meat in it. So either way, you can do whatever you want with that. As we move on around the back, uh, this coach is equipped with a glad hand. So if you've got a trailer that's air brake or air ride, you already have the fittings. Uh, you do have a 50 amp outlet. So when your uh, generator is running, the, um, the outlet uh, will be hot. So that's power out. Um, this is set up to um, connect to your trailer for your marker lights, brake lights, etc. cetera. Uh, the hitch, uh, is uh, currently has a two and five sixteenths ball. This ball is welded to this hitch, but again, in the storage compartment just a second ago, um, you do have the other hitch that you can remove this and slide that one in and you can put whatever style receiver you want in it. Uh, the little tip right there is your generator exhaust. Uh, this has your shore power reel in it. The reel is powered, so um, you've got release and retract. So release, you press here, the cord goes out, retract, the cord sucks in. I always highly recommend as you're pulling the cord in, kind of help feed it. I know some people will press the button with the cord 50 foot out and, and let the little electric motor do all the work, but it's a great idea to kind of feed it as you press the button and roll it up. Up in this compartment too, you'll hear a little box kind of making a humming noise. I'm currently plugged into shore power, but what that is, is that's the automatic transfer switch. So. Um, if you fire the generator up, it's going to choose generator power over shore power, um, but the uh, automatic transfer switch is taking generator power or shore power and, and choosing what is going into your breaker panel inside the coach. But it'll always make a little humming noise, uh, so nothing to worry about there. Uh, the next spot over is a 12.5 Onan diesel generator. The diesel generator is fed from the truck tank, so there's no separate tank to put diesel in to make this one run. 
Uh, it's got 4,360 hours on it. We did just fully service it. And when we service it, we do engine oil, oil filter, fuel filter, and air filter. So all that has been done. Uh, it's all brand new. Um, you can start it from down here or you can start it from inside the coach. So we'll show you that when we go in there. Um, the tires, uh, it's got the Continental HDs on it. Um, to my knowledge, they were replaced um, earlier this year. So great tread, as you'll see in the photo album that I put online. Um, they're really good as far as tread. They look new. And we also uh, just uh, check the tire pressure in all of them. So all that's good to go and ready, ready to rock and roll. Inside this one is a water station. So I'll show you a little bit about this. This hose right here, uh, if you were at an event or something and needed to fill a bucket up or wash something off, there's a, a quick connect fitting on this that goes to this little um, c compression coupling here and you can turn the pump on and, and have water on board. Um, this does have a water filter system. Here's the wrench for it, but it takes your little, I think it's a 10 or 11 inch uh, water filter and basically when you're putting water in the coach or you're on city water it's going to filter the water um, your low point drain is here so there's a valve if you turn the valve it's going to drain the water out of the fresh water tank um, this is your your uh, black and gray tank valves and we'll show you here in a second where the hose goes but you pull these guys to dump the sewage um, when you put this hose on you got hot and cold um, this little black fitting here is the black water sewage flush so when you dump the valves you can connect a hose to that and uh, turn your hose like faucet on pull the black valve out where it's open and it will flush the sewage uh, tank out down here there's a little blue valve what this guy does is uh, currently it's in tank fill so if you hook a hose here turn your hydrant on outside the coach it's going to fill your water tank up when the water tank gets full, it will run out of vent. Obviously, you can look at the gauge to see if it's full, but it will start spitting out on the ground when it gets full. And if you were on city water, which means if you were at a racetrack that had a, a water line right beside your coach or at a campground or at your shop, you hook the hose again into this, press this down, twist this valve down, and it'll turn it on city water. So if you're running on your fresh water tank, you want to make sure and have that guy up in that position. So um, that takes care of that cabinet. Again, you, can, you guys can call or text any time with any questions. Um, my cell phone number is 270-556-8461. And I know this, um, the videos like this are normally super helpful, but if you have a question, be sure to, to call me. The next one over is gonna be part of your tank system. Uh, the wiring always kind of looks like that, but that's where the, um, the gauges that are reading your um, black and gray levels are um, are on the side of the tank and then this fitting right here is where you'll connect the flexible hose out before you pull the valves inside um, and what that does is that's how you dump your sewer you pull the valves it runs out of that um, cap into your flexible hose into the sewage dump uh, the next one down is the longer one here uh, this one is um, just more of a display of your tanks and the hose, the big flexible hose is setting up in here. And we'll move on down to the next one. This one is, is where your batteries are at. So this does have the uh, big sealed batteries. Uh, the blue ones on the right are going to be for your coach. The black ones on the left are for the engine. So um, black ones on the left go to the start the motor. The blue ones are what's running the house side, which house side refers to the, the camper side of it. Uh, the next one down, this guy here, is going to be, um, there is an air outlet here, which you can get a little hose and an air chuck if you had to air something up or needed air pressure. It uses the compressor off the engine of the coach to, um, uses the same air that the coach runs on. It's, uh, you know, these coaches have onboard tanks for the brakes and you can tie into that and blow something off or air a tire up. All right, um, this right here, you pull this, these two levers back, fold it down to fill the coach up with fuel. Um, I will go ahead and pop the hood just to show you. Up under the hood is all nice and clean. Um, again, it has the 600 horsepower, uh, big Volvo engine in it. So air, air filters brand new, uh, fuel filters are new, oil filters new, all that has just been replaced. So all 
on around again. Um, this side here is uh, your other fuel tank. So you pull these two handles, pop this guy down, get to your fuel. And we've already done those. So uh, this uh, coach is equipped with the side view cameras. So if you turn your right turn signal on, it's gonna give you a right angle, kind of like a blind spot view. Um, I've seen it help people in the past keep from running over someone. So super cool feature. And that's on the same screen as when you put it in reverse, um, you'll have a backup cam too. Um, the code, I will text that to you, but basically you punch in the code, hit lock, it's gonna lock punch in the code, hit unlock, and there is two little um, wireless key fobs too inside. So we'll kick our shoes off here and go inside and show you around. I'll we'll actually start down here. The little switch right here is for the steps. So if you don't want the steps coming in and out every time you open the coach, you press that switch and they'll, they'll leave them out. Now they will come in if you fire the coach up to take off, but uh, if you, while they're out, if you flip that, um, each time you open the door, it doesn't open and close and just wear the steps out. If you were storing the coach, uh, let's say you were in an event, you were leaving, you're like, hey, I want to make sure no one left any lights on, generators off, you want to make sure everything's dead, hit store and that kills all the 12 volt system and the whole coach at once. Then hit when you want to turn everything back on, hit use. Now, this switch typically will not work if it's plugged into shore power. So this will only work if there's no shore power, no generator, and you want to shut everything down. This little guy here, this screen, um, is where you do your lighting. So you can do all lights on, all lights off. You can click the light button and turn certain ones on. It's also where you do your slides. So you hit slides, uh, bedroom, be bed, bedroom, or main. So the, the bed is gonna be the bed slide. Bedroom's gonna be the bunks, that whole wall that slides. The main is gonna be the main living room of the coach. Um, also on this screen, you've got awning, where you run the awning in and out. And then you've got other, which is your generator. So again, you can start the generator from out there, or you can pull this screen up, hold the on button down, I think for about 10 seconds, you'll hear the fuel pump on the generator come on and uh, it'll come on, do its cycle, and then it will fire up. So then you hit the little square to go back to the screen. Um, this is really not anything, it's not storage. This is where all the wiring runs. So this is like a, a very neat access to uh, do some maintenance if you had a fuse blow um, or a, a wiring problem. And uh, we'll start by going, um, we'll start up here actually on the audio. So this is um, a kind of a big deal up above us here. So this panel flips down. Um, in here you've got your inverter, which was that white box we showed you in the beginning. Uh, the inverter's taking the 12 volt and turning it into 120. Um, up here you can also, um, let's say you turn the inverter on, there's an on off button down here. There's also an on off button for the charger. Now, when you plug these into shore power, the charging system will automatically come on. And like on the screen right now, it says float charging 13.6 amps. So, uh, I mean volts. So it's taking, um, it's taking the 120 into the coach, um, or for this matter, it's taking 220 because it's a 220 50 amp cord and it's uh, turning it into uh, 13 volts to recharge your house battery. So it's currently on a float Okay, so the black switch up here uh, says emergency generator start. Um, basically what that does is it connects your house batteries to the engine batteries. So um, let's say someone left all the lights on and um, this thing wasn't plugged into shore power, the generator wasn't running, and you come out and you're like, oh man, we can't even start the generator because all the batteries are dead on the house side, which starts, starts the generator. You can press this switch and it connects the engine side batteries to the house batteries, which would at least allow you to get the generator fired up and get everything back up and going. Um, this coach is also equipped with heated tanks, which are the holding tanks. So you turn all three of those on, it doesn't get them like steamy hot or nothing, but it knocks the edge off to where um, they will not freeze and bust. Uh, down here, you can also control the awning here, which you can also control it down there. But um, you also up here set the wind sensitivity so you can make it to where if you got a real light wind, the awning comes in on its own or some people are a little more risky and they, um, they set it to where you have to have a higher wind for it to come on. But the, um, the wind sensor is nice. Um, I've seen it save a lot of people in awning before. So uh, there's a little metal key up here. I want to show you that. That goes to the iPad case, which Jim can spin around and show you. Um, this iPad, you stick the key in the side, the little pin will pop out, and that's how you get the iPad out of there if you ever needed to do something to it. Um, there's also um, 
in and out. I'm thinking this is for the awning. I'm like 99% sure this goes to this. So I'm going to leave those two up in there. Not sure what these guys go to. I think it's something up here for the um, all the audio that's on the coach, but all that's there. So the little awning remote and the little key for the iPad are both sitting there. Um, this is a Google Voice, and it's something I would say you probably just want to... Um, you can Google the model number and play with it. I'm pretty sure it's like you can talk to the coach and make things happen. I haven't really played with that, but um, that's what that is. So up here is um, all of the audio equipment for the uh, Wi-Fi system I, that I had um, gave you the phone number for Dan. He's going to help you get all that set up. So a couple different things on the satellite. Number one, this thing has cooling towers in it because um, between all your satellite boxes, um, it's something I've always kind of thought was weird about these coach companies. They don't have any ventilation in those cabinets a lot of times. And the previous owner of this coach said, man, if I would have put those cooling fans in, it would be 120, 30 degrees up in there, which is going to definitely probably shorten the life of the electronics. So it's actually got fans built in here and up top that are keeping some air moving in this guy. Uh, this one right here, this track vision, that is your in-motion satellite. So that's the satellite system that you want to turn on probably 90% of the time. That's You could watch TV going to the races. When you get to the races, it's still keeping its signal. Now, the um, switch for this guy, you pull it out, is on the right back corner. So the switch is up. It rocked up, and you'll see the lights come on. They'll come on orange when you turn it on. Then they turn to green. But that's the switch, and it says satellite on-off switch is on the right rear corner. So um, if you're if you're running this, you have to have this little jumper looped to the top. And I'll have Jim kind of zoom in there. So see the little jumper? You want it looped up to the top, okay, if you're running the silver one, which is here. The silver one is for in motion. Now, if you don't have this one on, you can turn this wind guard traveler. And that's one of the, this is high definition over here. And the difference is high definition is going to get you a little better screen, um, but you don't use this going down the road because this is actually a dish that stands up on the top of the coach and um, and locks into a signal like you would kind of set a dish outside your house per se. So this will get you a little better picture. This is going to get you down the road um, in motion wise. So if you turn this one off again, the switch is right back here flipping down. The lights will go out. Hold the power button down on this guy. But if you run the high definition, you have to come over here and loop this down. So it'll go from the middle down. Right now it's middle up for the silver one. You'll go middle loop down, okay? Um, if you want to wire or program your iPhone to be able to run the coach like that iPad on the wall, that iPad is connecting wirelessly. It has no wire going to it other than a power wire. There's a little one control box. You download, you scan the little QR code right there, and then you um, download the app and you scan that barcode. And what that does is that actually, you can you can allow, I don't know, I think up to like 10 phones to connect. You can turn lights on, awnings, water pump, whatever from your phone. So we've covered this. This is just a fan cooling system. This is your in motion. This is a fixed satellite. You're gonna use one or the other. You're only gonna use this one um, if you're stationary, if you're stopped. And there's a, actually a, a little label on the dash of this coach that says lower dish in bold print because that's probably easy to do. Take off, not realize that thing is stood up and go under a bridge or a low bridge or whatever, or just the wind. I mean, I think going down the road, it wouldn't last long. So um, this is a multi-port switch. This is just getting everything connected up here. This guy here is your direct TV box. The little card is in the edge of him over here. The direct TV is currently on. I spoke to the previous owner. He's going to call direct TV and like put on the, a note on the account to release it out of his name. And what you'll do is call, give them the serial number off that card, and they'll transfer the service from his name to your name. So I asked him to leave it on just long enough to get us the transition period, and he agreed to do that. So um, up here is a DVD player. All this stuff, again, connects to the main TV up front and then connects to the TV outside in the outdoor entertainment. Um, this right here is for the uh, wireless internet. I've never had one of those systems. I've Rico, previous owner, said it was super uh, simple to set up. So Dan is the guy you'll need to get with on that. Um, that's a TVU network. Um, I've been told it's some of the nicest Wi-Fi equipment. Probably a little more than you need, but hey, if it's there and uh, you know if the monthly service is reasonable, why not take advantage of it? 
Um, so that takes care of that area. Uh, the rest of it in here is just kind of storage. Uh, you can see uh, you do have uh, slide out trays, super nice cabinetry throughout the coach uh, drawer there. Uh, down here is your uh, 120 volt um, pa panel. So that's doing like front air conditioner, bed air conditioner, second AC, your cooktop. Um, this is doing the heated floors in the coach. Um, lots of stuff here that you can turn on. Uh, the next one over here is your 12 volt panel. And on the back, it's got labeled kind of what goes where. So if you ever blow a 12 volt fuse, the 12 volt panel is um, is here, and then your 120 volt is in the bottom. Um, we'll go around here, sink, double sink, simple operation there. Uh, this is a, an induction cooktop. So it is a true induction. It's got instructions on how to use it. The label is still on there. I almost bet you it's never been used. You do have to have true induction pots and pans for that. Um, so you will need to order True Induction brand. It'll be in the picture of when I do the online photo album here in a minute, but you do want to get, um, it says this induction requires pots and pans that are made of magnetic materials. I don't think you have to get their brand, but you have to get induction, you know, uh, the proper pots and pans to use that. Um, you do have the Samsung microwave, uh, which is a convection oven, oven which means you can um, bake or roast in it. So. Um, if you turn it on convection, you can actually put a, um, a metal pan. I know that's the old thinking is you can't put metal in a microwave, but if you turn it on convection, you can actually put a metal pan in there. Um, you do have the, Sam, or the Whirlpool fridge, uh, which has a safety on the freezer for down here. Okay, And we've got a safety on the fridge up here. We just turned this guy on, so we read in the instructions that it takes sometimes up to 24 hours for these guys to cool down. So we are going to leave it on while um, we travel, um, but uh, hopefully by the time they get to you, everything's nice and cooled down. So, But again, don't go tugging on the door. Latch here, safety for the top. And what these do is uh, they they save the door from flying open and everything going in the floor down the road. So you got another one down here. Um, Samsung TV up front, Sonos, again, uh, sound bar with uh, surround sound. And as you can see in the slide out, there's um, a little pot there, and there's one back here to our left. Um, we did put this in, so the, we thought the black just, the whole coach is kind of blacked out. So you can slide this, though. It's on a rod uh, to where you can slide it down and out of your way. But if you're going down the road and you don't want the light or you want the privacy, um, that is all nice and, and super neat how it hangs there. As you'll see in the photo, uh, you remove the two cushions here. This guy does turn into a, uh, a queen size hide a bed. So the bed comes out to about right here and um, it'll be comfortable for someone to sleep on. And then again, you'll notice in the pictures, this is just um, compressed down on there. So if you get under, pop it with your hand or raise up, um, the, the table comes up, the two legs will come off and then you raise up on these, kind of lift up and they'll fold out like that. So if you fold both of them out, they meet in the middle. And as you'll see in the photo album that I sent you, it literally uh, makes a little bed there. So super neat. You got a couple people could sleep here. You got two here, you got two bunks, and then um, a king size in the bedroom. So you're two, four, six, eight. I mean, you're eight people comfortable or six people like super, super comfortable. So I love the layout of the coach. Um, these lights under here are going to turn off with these. These you turn off here. Or if you hit the uh, switch down there, it says all lights off. It kills power to all of them. So um, the TV remotes are right here. Um, this one, it goes directly to the TV, but the, the direct TV remote also operates the TV. So this, I guess, is kind of a backup or whatever. Um, if you want to use the smart TV features, you would use this one, but the direct TV one is probably what you're going to use 90% of the time. One thing I noticed, when you run the slide in, in and out on this coach, don't let a remote be hanging sideways like that, okay? Because the lip of the slide could catch the remote. So always look when you run them in to make sure they're straight up and down. Uh, we'll move over to the iPad. Um, so when you press it, turn him on, the code is three, six, seven, four. Okay. Um, and when you press that, you're going to pull up the app, which is called one control. And it's the same app you can download on your phone. Um, so you can hit monitor panel. Um, and again, three, six, seven, four, and it's going to show you water pump on and off 
uh, propane tank off, gas water heater off. So um, if you want the hot water, all you have to do is turn the gas water heater on, propane tank on, and, um, and the gas water heater is instant. It's a tankless system. So you're you're not going to have a tank full of water in it when you it does have to detect flow so turn the the hot water um, faucet on or if you're in the shower turn it all the way hot let it run for a second that thing feels the water flowing and that switch is on boom it'll start getting hot instantly and it will not cool down until you run out of water in your tank so uh, we do love that about it it's got the instant um, you can do the awning in and out uh, you can do lighting you can turn everything on at once Exterior light down here is the porch light, but you can do them one at a time or all at once slides. You can run the bed slide, bedroom, main slide. I would only run one slide at a time because they do kind of pull the battery down, um, you know, when the slide motor moves. So I would do one slide at a time. But uh, yeah, so this is pretty cool. And after that, it's just an iPad that you could uh, download uh, music on, link it to the Sonos system. Of course, you can link your phone to the Sonos if you want, but um, the one control, that's the app you want to use. The code is 3674. So it's the code for the one control app and the iPad. Um, heat to floors. So uh, there's a little switch. These It is um, dual zone. So you can turn the front heat on and there's another controller for the rear heat, but you press it on, turn the heat up and down there. Um, this is a max air fan, fan. So this control runs this fan right above our head here. So you turn it on, you can pull air out, or if it was a cool night and you were sleeping in these bunks and you want a little AC kind of circulating, you can um, turn that on and pull air down. So let Jim come on in here and... Um, the bathroom, both of them have Tecma, uh, the um, electric flush, like the vacuum toilet. So the control, you there's two settings. You can do a light flush, which you just um, press it once and you're going to get like a little bit of water or you can do a heavy flush where you hold the button down, it'll fill the bowl up and then it'll vacuum it out. Uh, the switch is right here for the lights. Again, there's another max air vent up above our head, which is going to suck. Typically in a shower uh, room, you're going to pull the steam out when you're taking a shower, open that guy up, turn it on. It's all controlled by the little black control here. Um, something neat they did is put soap dispensers. There's one in here. There's one in the shower. Um, again, everything works, runs perfectly. When you open this door, always remember when you travel to close the door and close the latch. If not, going down the road, these doors get to swinging um, and you're going to damage one of the shower doors. So open it up. Going down the road, though, just close them. Um, and there you are. Um, on back in the bedroom... Pretty self-explanatory in here. We'll go through it just to make sure everything's good. Over here, you've got another control uh, to control the lighting or your slides. And uh, you can also, from this one, um, turn your, um, your lights on and off or your slides. So this one over here does your fan, which is there. There is a green switch. Uh, you can turn the light. You can dim it or turn it all the way on. And then you can turn the fan on. That's a lot better fan than they come with. The previous owner did have that installed after the fact. Um, the windows are blacked out. He didn't want any light in the bedroom when he was trying to sleep, so um, they are Velcroed. You can peel that off if you want the light, but these are Velcroed shut. Um, you do have a wireless remote here, and I'm pretty sure that is for the ceiling fan again, and it's over here on the edge. All the bedding is new, so the comforter, the fitted sheet, the regular sheet, the pillows, they've never been slept on. It's all brand new, and it's a super, super, super comfortable mattress. Um, I'll have you spin around, Jim, and we'll take them in here for a second. Um, same deal on the shower. You've got your, um, all the soap dispensers. Everything works. It's got a super nice shower head. I'll let Jim kind of tune in on that for a second, but looks like something you would see in a very nice home. Um, you do have a max air vent control right up here again that's either going to pull air down or you can take it to where it pulls steam and air out. You've got your light switch, your heated floors for the bedroom and your bathroom. The controller's right here, so you turn it on. It'll tell you the current temperature, and just like a thermostat, you can say, I want the floor at 80 degrees, and it'll get there. Uh, another Tecma electric um, flush toilet. Controls are on the wall. Um, again, you've got, that's actually a thing, a mouthwash. Uh, soap. So I'm leaving it all in here. Everything goes. It was in here when I got it. Um, I did put you guys a couple new little um, comfy 
rugs for when you step out of the shower in there too. Uh, the doors for this. So there's uh, this little white strap. You lift him up. There's a hook you lift up on and then the door will close. Of course, you can lock it. But when you go to shut it, when you're traveling, you want this guy shut or open in the open position just like this. We'll spin around here. Uh, you've got another Samsung TV with a Sono soundbar, lots of storage. Um, that's got actually a rod for uh, hanging clothing, but super nice storage. Um, the TV remotes, again, you've got a, a universal remote that came with the Direct TV box. Um, again, this box, you'll need to pop that little card out. It's got a code on it that Direct TV will need. I'll get with the previous owner, make sure he's got those codes so he can call Direct TV and say, Hey, I sold the coach. Need to get these two boxes out of my name so the new owner can call in and put them in his name. This is for this room. Um, this is for the Blu-ray player, which is right here for DVD. And then this is for the TV. So again, you'll probably use this one most of the time, but you've also got these two. I'm going to put them in this drawer for you. Um, under here is storage with some little pull-out uh, bins and stuff. And uh, then we'll roll on around. I think we showed you the bunk area. All the bedding, too, on the bunks. We put a new, um, there's a new fitted sheet, a new um, regular sheet, and then this is like a little uh, blanket that goes with it. The pillows are new. The pillowcases are new, so no sense in getting all that unless you have um, your own pillow you're bringing or whatever. Um, feel good to sleep on this stuff. It's all brand new. It's never been used. So it does have a TV in each bunk. Um, I'm thinking the TV will play direct TV off what's in there. I haven't really messed with that, so you might want to play with that some, but I'm pretty sure it's wired to where whatever's on in here, it plays on these. You do have a light in each bunk. There's a switch um, that you can turn on and um, you need some light down there. All of the shades in the coach are um, day and night, so you just kind of pull down and they'll auto retract. And then you, This is the the day shade, which is like perforated where you can see through it. And then the night shade is here. So you can do either one or both or whatever on that. Uh, Jim, you don't have anything that I missed or haven't covered? I think we pretty much got it. Again, um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, give me a call. Let's hit the cab real quick, Jim. That's something that we always forget to do. Or actually, um, <clears throat> mention this door. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. So um, something that we were notified of by the previous owner that you want to know, when you close the slide out, which is going to be labeled the bedroom slide, okay, which is the slide with the bunks, make sure the door is closed. If the door is open like that, the slide will catch on the door hinges and bend them. So when you close the slide, make sure that is the door is closed just like that, okay? Um, because this slide is so close back here that it will hit, um, if it's open like that, it will hit when the slide starts coming in and it will bend the door hinges. Um, we didn't show them this one. Let's go ahead and do that. This is just like the latch in the bathroom there, but you just kind of push in, pull a little hook out, and this goes all the way over and creates a privacy for either the person in the bunks, person in the bedroom, vice versa, whatever. Um, on the back side of this door, it's kind of got like a mirror film. So there's a mirror film for the bedroom, and then it's got a, a matte finish on this side. But again, going down the road, you always want to put this in because when this slide comes in, you know, it comes all the way over to about here. So two things, make sure this door traveling, this door is closed and the little uh, strap is on it. Make sure this door back here is like it is all the way, I guess you would call that the open position with a strap on it. And then um, make sure the door behind behind us here, make sure this one is all the way closed like this right here um, before you start moving the slide in. Um, let's go up in the cab right quick and just show them a little bit about this. I think um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we can run through it real quick. Okay, so uh, when you turn the key on, uh, this is a Garmin Trucker GPS, so it actually is kind of like set at the height and the length and the weight, which is super cool. It'll keep you, um, if you were going on a road with a low-lying bridge, this has got programming in it to help 
um, prevent you from hitting a bridge, which is um, super, super neat on Garmin's part. Fire the coach up. Um, you do have your parking brake. You won't use this one unless you've got an air ride trailer or air brake trailer behind you. Um, to put the coach in drive, foot on the brake, hit the D. Uh, you can paddle shift it up and down, so you can um, choose your own um, gear if you were in a mountain area or a hill and you didn't want the coach shifting in and out of gear. Uh, this is an easy tire, so you can turn him on, and it's a digital tire monitor system. Um, so I don't know that that's a necessary, but they put that on. That wasn't factory. That's something they added. Um, up above us here, you do have the leveling system, which you'll power up and hit auto level. And the coach is, uh, it's got hydraulic leveling, so power it up, hit the auto level. You'll hear the little uh, hydraulic pump come on. The jacks will lower down, and it'll level the coach. Um, these seats are, there. you can show them there, there is so many different settings for lumbar support, left side support, up, down, the whole works. And um, to make the seat scoot forward and backwards, that's your lever there. Um, up here, you do have your backup cam. So uh, as you can see, it's currently set on the left view, uh, which is uh, the left side. So if you turn your right on, there's the right view and um, left view. And then when you put the coach in reverse, you will see the backup cam come on. So 54,621 miles uh, on the clock there. And as you can see, I was telling you about that print. It says lower dish in bold print there. So they want to make sure that that, if you were using the high definition, the, the actual dish that stands up and looks like a direct TV satellite dish, that that is lowered down before you go. Um, power windows heated mirrors, power locks, I mean, it's loaded as far as the uh, interior. It does have the minimizer floor mat kit, so that's a rubber, um, kind of a formed kit that you can take out and wash and, and keep clean, so we do love that, and um, the windshield's even heated. I don't know how much you guys will use it in cold weather, but um, always remember, uh, the coach is matte black, which is a wrap, so you'll see some spots with the red, that's the original color of the coach, uh, if you ever got tired of the matte black, you can have it removed. Anytime you remove it, there's always a few little spots that you'll have to touch up on it, but um, those come on. Actually, they protect the paint more than they hurt it, so um, you'll ask any vinyl installer that's removed one, they'll say the paint's more preserved with, uh, with having a wrap on it than if you were driving the coach around for two or three years with no wrap on it. So, it um, does have a CV radio up top there. I don't know if we mentioned that, but stereo system, uh, does have an upgraded stereo in it, uh, GPS, um, it's it's loaded. It's super, super, super nice. I love the two full baths about the coach, um, but uh, it's um, about as nice as they come. I don't know of anything I would really change if I was even building one new. So, again, give me a shout with any questions. Uh, I do appreciate your business and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys soon. So. Uh, Chase Motorsports, my name is Dylan Thompson, Paducah, Kentucky. We're race-haulers.com. Give us a like on Facebook, Instagram. We would love to hear from you. Have a good one.